Let's go now to the UN because the Great Barrier Reef today is officially no longer in danger. Federal Environment Minister Tanya Plevisek says the decision is because of the, quote, significant progress of the Albanese government, all the things it's done in, what, a year on climate change? Even though at last year, just after the election, so just only months after, the Australian Institute of Marine Sciences admitted the, relief, the reef had registered, quote, the highest levels of coral cover yet recorded in the northern and central regions of the past 36 years of monitoring. Well, Sophie, I reckon we call BS on uh, the idea that this is all to do with Tanya Plevisek. Well, the Labor government, Peter, is certainly claiming this one, uh, but I guess you could argue a very valid point on, on what you've just said about record levels of coral cover. Um, I suggest to Australians who haven't been to the Great Barrier Reef, absolutely do so. It's a magnificent part of our country. Uh, I think this is good news for Australians. As to who's to credit for it, well, let the politicians fight out that one. But uh, unfortunately, Peter, when you hear good news about the climate, Climate and good news about the Great Barrier Reef, it doesn't really fit in with the whole ideology of climate change. So uh, Labor are claiming that they've, you know, reinvented the wheel here. Uh, and Tanya Plibersek was certainly out there today taking ownership of this. All right, well, they say that about the reef, but James, down in New South Wales, the National Parks Association's taking on the state government uh, because and they're going to take them through the courts because they have now allowed Snowy 2.0 to run all its uh, transmission lines. These are live <coughs> power lines through the Kosciuszko National Park. Now, it's not just farmers who are upset. Uh, I can't fathom putting these live transmission lines and all the associated fire risk through a national park. Let's see if uh, Plibersec weighs into this one, James. Yeah, well, exactly, Peter. And again, I mean, I think it goes back to what we were talking about just a moment ago. All of the extreme things you have to do in order to service this renewable green net zero dream um, winds up having so many costs and opportunity costs. This notion, as you say, running live transmission wires through Kajiasko National Park, yes, there's the bushfire risk. Number two, there's also all of the environmental risks around Snowy Hydro 2.0, if it ever gets off the ground or out of the ground, as, as it were. But, you know, this transmission lines issue, I've been talking to farmers all week. It's not just Kajiasko. Mm. Across the state, they're furious. And one of the things they say is if a fire breaks out, the RFS won't bring their equipment near these towers because of the danger. And you can't have a helicopter drop water on fires and so on. So there's really a lot of danger around this. I'm stunned that they're thinking about doing this.